name is Dr. Laura Davis, and I'd like to give you a short explication of one of my favorite poems by Robert Frost called Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. First I'll read the poem and then I'll discuss it. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. So this is a very simple poem in some, in some ways, but I think can also be read on a deeper level. Let's talk about the, the literal meaning of the poem first. So here we have a man, presumably, um, stopping by the woods uh, the darkest evening of the year, so near Christmas. Uh, it's a dark winter evening very silent as we can all imagine as he approaches these woods uh, with his horse. And he stops there and we get the, the sense that this is quite unusual. The horse senses that it's unusual that, that they're stopping without a farmhouse near or anywhere except to look into these deep dark woods. And so he stops there for a moment and sort of contemplates the beauty of the woods and then starts to think about all of the responsibilities he has at home and all the promises he has to keep as he puts it. Um, and he goes, he, he takes off from that point. Uh, so it's a beautiful little poem, just about a moment in time. But I think with some of the language that's used here, we can um, think about perhaps a little bit of a more metaphorical meaning um, than what we get initially. Um, so um, basically, I think we, we might want to think about these woods and what they would represent. And again, looking closely at the language so here there's somebody else's woods, presumably, that he's looking at. Um, they're, they're familiar to him, uh, but they're not, they don't seem to be his. He says, I know whose woods they are, but his house isn't here, so the person isn't present there. Um, as I said, it's kind of unusual for him to be stopping there, and he's got the woods and the frozen lake there. Um, there's quite a bit of um, emphasis in this short poem on the idea of darkness. So it's mentioned uh, once in the second stanza, it's the darkest evening of the year. And that word uh, dark and the phrase dark and deep is mentioned again in the last stanza. Um, it's also, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute, the idea of uh, the implications of sleep, but I think let's just think about this darkness and the woods as a kind of darkness. So here we have this man um, looking into the woods, these deep, dark woods, and contemplating them, and they seem to be in some ways a kind of another world for him. I think in, that we can we are invited to think of um, think of these woods as another world, and, and a kind of liminal space, a kind of in between space. He says it's between um, the wood, uh, the between the woods and the frozen lake. So he's kind of between spaces here, and he's looking at the woods. He hasn't entered them significantly. He isn't entered them, just like uh, the road not taken, somebody standing looking at two different paths, and it's not until later in the poem that they actually decide which path to take. So it's a, it's a moment of pause and a moment of contemplation at the edge of something. Um, the darkness, I think we're invited to think of that space as uh, perhaps representative of death. In other words, something outside of one's own consciousness and present being, a different world, perhaps the unconscious itself. So somebody looking upon something that, that has to do with the self but is somehow separate from the self and is kind of otherworldly. Um, so in, at this point we can see the woods taking on uh, more significant meaning than just uh, some woods. So they could represent the unconscious, a part of the self that one um, is looking at but can't quite access, or they could represent in fact death itself. And I think with the idea of darkness and sleep later, um, that that could represent death. So let's look at the last stanza then and this idea of sleep that comes through. So the last stanza, again, the woods are lovely, so inviting in a sense. 
but again we have that dark and deep so there's something very deep very sort of mysterious there we don't know what's in the depths of these woods and then he says but I have promises to keep so he's got another life to go to on the uh, the other side not the woods side um, and he feels that even though he's drawn he's kind of like a magnet sort of the woods are a magnet drawing him into this darkness and deepness um, he has other responsibilities that he has to go to and the last line significantly is repeated twice and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep and i think that's very important that it is um, that, that that line is written twice for emphasis so we can hear that repeated the the weight of that final line so on the one hand again just reading it literally we can see that he has miles to go. He's riding his horse, he has to go away from these woods, and even though he's had this moment of contemplation and thought, he has to go, go on now. He has to go back home, and there's quite a few miles um, that he has to cover before he will reach home to go to his little bed. Uh, but on the other hand, I think we can think of that on a larger scale. So for example, we could think of it in terms of his whole life, and I have my whole life to live before I die. And this, I think, um, suggests, as I said before, that the woods could represent death, that he might be on the edge of these woods, contemplating his own death and saying, ah, I can't go, go there yet. Uh, I have miles to go. I have much of my life to live before I sleep, which that sleep could represent the kind of ultimate sleep, um, death itself. So once again, the poem is a beautiful little poem that can just be read on a very literal level, but uh, can also be read on kind of a deeper level um, that has to do not just with a moment in time, time is actually quite significant in this poem, but in terms of a large span of time. Thank you very much.